Okay, thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Tony Verhoeven, Membership and Marketing Manager at CSIA. Thank you for attending this month's CSIA webinar. Today, we will present Digital Marketing for System Integrators. A reminder that if you have questions for our speakers, please use the Q&A box to the right of your screen, not the chat box. This program, like many of CSIA's webinars, will be archived on controlsys.org typically within 24 hours of this broadcast. Many thanks to John Weber, Monica Anderson, and the whole team at Software Toolbox for hosting and sponsoring our monthly webinars. Software Toolbox was created in 1996 to rid the industry of bad third-party software experiences. They do this by providing a single contact source for a variety of industrial automation software tools and applications. The knowledge of how they work together or with other automation software to deliver end user value and a responsive, proven support process all focused on lowering risk. Looking for solutions? Find them on the web at softwaretoolbox.com. Today's co-presenters are Megan Pasaveras from Rivergate Marketing and me, Tony Verhoeven. I had a 20-year career in technical software sales and product management before joining CSIA. Not only have I been in the cold calling trenches, managed large accounts, but have also led large teams to market and launch new products. Since 2015, I have served CSIA to establish the exchange as the premier directory and buyer's guide for industrial automation clients and help members build their profile to attract them. Since then, the number of annual visitors has grown 350% and organic traffic by 275%. The exchange has also generated hundreds of marketing or qualified marketing and sales leads, which have turned into clients for our members. I attribute this early success to taking my own medicine that we will share in this webinar series. I look forward to helping you learn from my successes and mistakes. Megan Passaveras is a Marketing and Communications Manager at Rivergate Marketing. A data geek, Megan enjoys analyzing and strategizing with clients to help grow their businesses. Prior to joining Rivergate, Megan worked with aerospace engineering and electrical distribution companies before teaching elementary school for seven years. While she does not have formal educa engineering education, the culture is in her bones as she is the daughter sister, and granddaughter of engineers. Megan earned a Bachelor of Science in Business Administration, Marketing, and a Bachelor of Arts in Spanish Language and Literature at the University of Connecticut. She holds a Master of Arts in Elementary Education and Teaching from American University. She resides in Grafton, Massachusetts with her husband and son. Please welcome Megan Passaveras. Hi, everybody. I'm so glad to be talking to everybody here today. Um, I may have met some of you at the Control Systems Integration uh, Conference in Fort Lauderdale in, in May. Um, and we work with, Rivergate Marketing works with a few other systems integrators, including Huffman Engineering, Patty Engineering, and Superior Controls, um, and a couple others. So I'm excited to kick off the beginning of this digital marketing series with the CSA and with Tony and get started today. So this is the beginning of the of the first series that we're going to have. We know that we have um, quite a range of attendees on this on this presentation today. We know we have some people who are in the marketing field, some people who are not in the marketing field, are engineers, business owners. So um, we're going to try and do an overview today. We're going to talk a little bit about um, what digital marketing is, why we should be doing digital marketing, where we should start, um, as well as some tips and tools that Tony and I have that should apply to everyone no matter what level you're at. And we're gonna give you a preview of some of our ideas for the upcoming topics that we're gonna cover in this series, but we would love your ideas on that as well. So we're gonna start because like we said, there's quite a range here. We wanna start with just a common definition of what is digital marketing. Uh, basically it is marketing, but digital. 
So <laughs> um, it, can include, it can include all of these things, social media marketing, your SEO, which is uh, your search engine optimization. It definitely includes your website and mobile advertising, email marketing, um, and it can include uh, really any of, any of these things, your blogs and your case studies and all of those sorts of things. Um, it can even include a crossover with radio and print and those other traditional forms of advertising as well. That's exactly right, Tim. Marketing is marketing. And, uh, you know, a few years ago uh, when, when people started to think, geez, well, should I do be social media marketing? And, you know, I had this, so I had this certain stigma with the, with the social media in quotes. And it's like, it's just marketing. Marketing is social media marketing now. Marketing is digital media. There's still print. There's still that outward, outbound push marketing. But uh, what we'll what we'll talk about in this series is, you know, in, integrated marketing really of how all of this, uh, how this all, tie, all ties together, and what you should be doing, and and how to get started if you're not into it yet. So if, uh, for some of you, we, you might be wondering why digital marketing um, or why should we be focusing on digital marketing if all marketing is marketing. We hear quite often that uh, this is a word of mouth industry, so we don't really need any marketing um, as a control systems integrator. And one of the things uh, that we like to make sure we are all on the same page about is that while word of mouth kind of looks like that picture on the left before where the only word of mouth was when you were actually talking to someone, now word of mouth does include digital forms of communication as well. So it could be on social media or through forwarding emails, liking, sharing, even the ratings that you might have on your business. Um, all of those things do still include a word of mouth um, piece, it's just digital. And the other thing is, you know, even if somebody does tell you, I would be very surprised to find somebody who didn't uh, at least Google you before, even if it was just to look up your phone number, before actually giving you a call, even if they did get a referral from someone. And with with, with word of mouth marketing, uh, it's, it's a simple fact of if these aren't siloed things, uh, even if you're getting word of mouth marketing, realize that those people are still looking you up, right? So the first, their first stop is Google. They're, the, the first stop after they get that business card or email with your phone number on it isn't to call you. It's probably Google to check you out. And one of the benefits of this, of the word of mouth and for Googling um, is when it's word of mouth, that person who they're getting the referral from is usually someone that they respect, trust, and, and who has authority in the area. So. You know, you, that respect and trust and authority transfers onto you. People, that's who people are going to call. They'll call a systems integrator when um, they think that you know your stuff and they believe that you're going to do it and do it well. So then the question is, how do we, how do we get this respect? How do we build this respect, this trust and this authority when it's not coming from, uh, from someone else? So, I, li I like I like this visualization, Megan, because um, it, it really explains, uh, you know, basically it's maybe to both roles. If you're a business development staff, um, you know, maybe the different reason is different for you versus maybe if you're a business owner on this call right now. If you're a business development staff, um, you know, again, I've been there. I've I've made cold calls, and uh, you know, you making making a cold call. Is, is kind of like a pebble to fill in this chasm, right? Event you do enough, and you're you're going to get noticed uh, or blocked, right? One of the, <laughs> one of those other one of those things. Uh, but providing educating your pers prospective clients uh, with white papers and videos is going to start to attract the right people uh, looking for you, uh, looking for solutions. And those are those are to keep the analogy. I'd say those are those are boulders versus. Uh, versus pebbles, and 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 if you're a business owner, then then it, it all starts with you. You should be supporting a digital marketing and inbound and content marketing effort, because it's going to make your business development staff uh, their job a lot uh, easier. We're not saying you don't have to make cold calls. We're just saying that you're going to have a lot more success. Your your conversion rate is going to go up, and and so versus uh, uh, call, calling, 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 emailing, emailing, emailing. And getting ignored, uh, it, it increases the chance of like, hey, I've never heard of you. Or like, hey, I've heard of you guys before. Where did I, where did I hear about you? 
Yeah, exactly. And one of the things there too is that you you have a better chance of having the right timing too. You're, you're calling someone and you may not know what they're looking for or what challenges they're currently, uh, what challenges has recently come up. But if you have that information, those case studies and the white papers out on the internet, that's ever, evergreen, right? Anytime somebody's looking for it, it's going to be available there and you're going to, it's there's a better chance that the right information is going to be meeting the right person at the right time. Because we know that buyers are making decisions, at least the first good chunk of their decision, without ever telling you. Um, there, there, this is one study from uh, CFE Media, which does plan engineering and control engineering. Um, they, they did a study called Marketing to Engineers, um, and it says that on average, buyers are about 39% through their buying process before they ever pick up the phone and talk to you. So they may have already made their shortlist or they may have already um, come up with a rough idea of what their solution is before you even get a chance to talk, talk to them. So if you have some information out there, then they can be finding your information as they're making that um, decision, even though you don't, you don't know about it. And, and think about how you make your own buying decisions. Now, when you make a buying decision on a, on a car uh, or a mortgage lender or whatever you're buying in as a consumer, that percentage is probably way higher. It's probably more like 80, 90 percent. You don't, you probably don't walk into a car lot with n zero idea of what you want. Uh, in fact, you probably built the car uh, in with some sort of form on CarMax.com or or true car or one of these where you actually build the car. The car may not exist, but you're building the car and you come <laughs> in with an idea of a price uh, and and uh, color and trim and all that kind of good stuff. So when that person, when you get there and talk to that salesperson, you know, they're 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 from their perspective, they're a little behind the eight ball because you already have a lot of information. So 40%, obviously, 39 or 40%. Is is obviously a lot lower than that, um, you know, because obviously there's probably a lot more uh, uh, decision points in mind. There's a, there's a committee, there's there's uh, executives and, and engineers that make a have to make a decision on who's going to automate their their process, and so th that's what I would attribute that lower process. It, it's 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 less of an emotional uh, decision um, at that point. But no, no matter what, you have to you have to acknowledge that. When they call you or email you or fill out a form, you're, they've already got an idea uh, about you. Maybe it's from one of your uh, pieces of content or through word of mouth advertising. So you better have some content to support, further support and get them to uh, uh, furthering their decision. Definitely. And think about yourself in that situation as the car buyer. Once you walk into that dealership, it's going to be pretty hard for that car dealer to completely change your mind at that point. Um, you know, they may have a slight chance, but you're pretty attached to whatever it is. So you, you want to make sure that, that your best ideas are out there so that your buyer is coming in with you um, with an idea that you support. So this, um, you know, engineers are consuming more content. So similar to, to that example, this is probably not that surprising to you. I think all of us are probably consuming more content than we were five years ago. So. Um, not only uh, are people looking for this, but and there is more content out there, but people are also reading more, uh, more product information and data sheets. They're attending more webinars. They're um, watching more videos, definitely, and reading more case studies and white papers, and even on down to, to blogs and, and infographics and that sort of thing. And one thing just to keep in mind here is don't necessarily use this um, as a priority list because uh, you know, if webcasts or trade publications online are are read more often and are growing more often, the way you get there is by reading blogs. The trade publication uh, may be picking up your your articles through your blog. So, don't look at this as a prioritization, but definitely um, consider that pretty much everybody is reading more of pretty much everything at this point. Excellent point. So another point to consider is um, this is some research that came from HubSpot that the average cost per lead is lower with inbound marketing versus outbound marketing. And inbound marketing is what we're talking about um, that's usually digital marketing where your customers are coming to you. They're finding you uh, on social media or they're finding you on search engines. And uh, so those 
those customers are coming to you. So it makes sense, of course, that those that the cost for those is going to be less than doing the outbound, the things where you're going out to your customers, uh, marketing efforts where you're hosting events or going to trade shows or um, putting out print ads um, kind of just more broadly. It's less expensive for a couple of reasons. One is that, you know, you're getting warmer leads that are coming into you. Um, they may be more targeted. And then the other thing is, you know, you write, you spend the money to write a case study or to write a blog. That money, that product then is available forever, basically, whereas the money that you spend on a trade show, that's great for whoever attends that trade show, but you're less likely to receive leads outside of whatever that audience is, whereas a case study or a blog, you, it may be a larger investment, uh, up, you know, to get started with a marketing effort, but it, it, the ROI long term is better. Yeah, and I think the, the one point to make, I want to make sure is that, again, this, this you know, when you talk about outbound and inbound marketing, uh, traditional versus uh, digital marketing, uh, th th there's really no line between this because if you think about going to a trade show and doing advertising, um, your inbound and content marketing, your blog articles, all that, all that supports that. So instead, we've all been at trade shows, uh, or a lot of people have been at trade shows, and you're standing there at the booth, and that person who walks by kind of squints at your booth and they're trying to figure out what do you guys do, right? That's the, those are the people that have never heard of you. So, uh, but if, if they're on your mailing list or you've been putting content out there, they, they walk up to you and they're like, Hey, I've heard of you guys. What do you, you know, what do you guys do? Or tell me more. Or I got an email from you guys, but. You know, I, I I kind of ignored it until now. So that happens all the time. Uh, it happens all the time to me when at, when I'm at a, uh, a CSIA uh, representation, a trade show, waiting, uh, standing there, and people will walk right up because we've been we've been communicating with them. Definitely, yeah. You definitely need a mix of both. So then the question is, where do you start? Um, like we said, we know a lot of you are in a lot of different places here. You may have uh, nothing but a website. You may have a full-blown marketing automation system. You know, all of these things are included. There's lots of things. So the one thing we would say is don't do everything. Don't start with everything. If you are somebody who either doesn't or barely has a digital marketing or marketing um, campaign rolling. Don't go into this and think, okay, by the end of 2018, I need to have all of these things done and running and complete. Um, that's a good way to burn out and do nothing well. So we would suggest um, starting with one or two things, and that's why we want to run this series to cover a range of different topics. So you can start wherever you are. We would say that, you know, all roads should lead to your website. So uh, if you don't have a website or you're not happy with your website right now, we would definitely suggest that's probably where your focus should be going. Um, but other than that, you know, you kind of got to look at where you are to build your, uh, to, to build your marketing infrastructure over time. Yeah, if you, if, if I look at the bottom of your website and it says copyright 2007, that's probably where you should start. Um, it's probably, you know, it's, 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 it's a website that is your brochure that's, that states what you do, but it doesn't tell your story. And that's, that's the next step is to have your website tell a story and be the receptacle for, uh, other, other places that you are, whether you're, uh, you're big on LinkedIn and you have a, a YouTube video series or you have, uh, you have a lot of media opportunities, um, that you take advantage of through, uh, our, our media partners, those sorts of things. Your, your website should be the, uh, you know, the all roads lead to, as Megan said. Exactly. So because it's, it is pretty personalized and it depends on, on what you have, we have a few action items for you for this month before the next, uh, before we move on with the rest of the, the webinar series to inventory your digital assets. So what do you have available? Do you have a website? I think probably everybody, uh, if you've been in business for any length of time, has a website. But like Tony says, if it has 
copyright 2007 or earlier than that, then you definitely want to take a look at with your website. But also look at avail look at what you do have and what is going well for you. Do you have a blog? Maybe it's just a little blog that you could ramp up a little bit more. Do you have any social channels started? Um, do you have any case studies? Do you even have any case studies that are in paper that you could convert to PDFs that you could put on your website and just create a landing page for that? Um, what images do you have available? Have you had engineers that have been taking pictures when they're out on site? Or do you have pictures that you could be taking in the office as people are, are working? Um, kind of take inventory of what you do have available um, so that you can, you kind of know where you are and then you can start to, to plan that path forward. And I do have a little asterisk there. Uh, there may be somebody on this call who doesn't feel like they have any digital assets at all, um, and we got you also. We, have, we, we are planning a webinar uh, later in the fall for, for people who don't have or think they don't have um, anything available. The second thing is to, um, you could start assessing the effectiveness of, of your of your marketing efforts if you haven't done that already. Um, look at your Google Analytics. If you don't have Google Analytics installed on your website, please do that. Uh, <laughs> I would say uh, do not pass go, do not collect $200 after this webinar. Just go Google how to install Google Analytics on your site and go ahead and do it. It really won't take probably more than 10 to 30 minutes to go ahead and set that all up. And then even if you're not looking at it, it'll be collecting the data and you can use that as a baseline. Uh, to compare your marketing efforts once you do start get, getting those rolling. And the last thing uh, that we would strongly suggest is to solidify your elevator pitch because what you're telling your customers is more important than how you tell them. Um, your customers are more worried about, you know, how great you are at SCADA systems specifically for a particular industry than they are that you told them about that on, through a great graphic on Twitter. Um, what you're going to tell them is much more important. So kind of nail down that elevator pitch, maybe talk to other people at your customers and kind of compare at, at your company rather, kind of compare your elevator pitches to make sure that you're on the same page that when you do get your marketing efforts started or when you uh, go and start combing through your marketing efforts, you can align that to that solidified elevator pitch. Yeah, and just going back, Megan, to what you said about you address some of the folks maybe that who feel like I don't, you know, I can't do any of this because I don't, I don't have any, I don't have any white papers, and, and <laughs> I don't have any videos. I don't, I don't know how to, I don't have time to write a blog, that sort of thing. And I, and I know I've talked to folks like that. I know I talked to a few folks like that uh, at the conference, and that's that's probably uh, more prevalent than um, than probably we give credit for. Uh, but I want, I do want to say, kind of come back. We will cover that. Uh, there are um, great companies out there that will will do ghostwriting or content that will learn. You know, they write niche blog articles or work with niche businesses like system integration, uh, industrial automation, uh, all the time. Um, in fact, I'm on the phone with one. So, <laughs> so, um, so there are companies out there that that can help you uh, generate contact. And and if nothing else. Uh, you know, if you've whether you've been in business for five or ten or twenty-five years, you have a multitude of stories in your head. Um, get your iPhone or get your get your Samsung phone out and just tell a story. Tell a story about how you helped uh, a customer reduce their energy costs or uh, you know re you know reduce risk in, in with any kind of uh, hacking or cybersecurity, increase their cybersecurity. Those get the, get that stuff down somewhere, and there are transcription services, and <laughs> there are ways to get yeah. that that uh, content out of your head where you don't have to sit down for three hours, which you don't have time for, to write a to write a blog article. So that stuff is coming. We will will definitely well this webinar is is higher level and a series of overview we we want you to know that we are going to come with some cold hard tactics and some real things that you can do again no matter what level we really want to help you guys especially if you feel like you're you know at that zero ground ground zero level definitely and because you know this is kind of an overview but we don't want you to walk away without something that is practical and tactical that you can go ahead and and use today or tomorrow or next week um, we have a couple of tips and tools that we pulled together that are just a couple of our favorite things that we like to use. So, Tony, why don't you go ahead and talk about yours? 
Absolutely. So the first two ones that I want to submit to everyone here uh, are are, the, uh, are a couple things that will help you kind of get started here. Now, um, I want to thank uh, Georgia Whalen from Rivergate Marketing who helped, and, and Megan, I think you probably identified this as well, is that we realized that um, uh, the last year that um, that somehow referral traffic from sources uh, like the exchange or from LinkedIn and other sources that uh, traffic was going down or like well what's what's happening well it, it, we fi we figured out and we found out that there are hundreds of articles on this is that Google uh, sometimes incorrectly records traffic uh, referral traffic meaning traffic from LinkedIn or uh, an external source, Facebook, LinkedIn, other another place that maybe you push push content that you're pointing to your own site, uh, it indirectly records it as direct traffic. And so if you're investing in the exchange, you're investing in uh, an ad space somewhere or other directories, that's important, right? That's bad. So uh, there is a way to take care of that, and you should start, like, immediately because uh, it, it's not going to help you with the past traffic and past history, but it's going to help you going forward. So there's a tool. I made a video uh, how to properly track traffic from uh, other sources. So I made it a nice, clean bit.ly link. It's, those are underscores between the words. Grab that. That's a video. It's like nine minutes. It will show you how to post content on uh, other sources where, that lead to your site. So uh, very important to check that out. The other one is, is there's an SEO analyzer from your website. It has a great amount of tools. You could probably do a webinar on this website alone, but it gets into uh, is your site um, identif you know, has the right keywords and uh, how is it ranked and what kind of authority does it have uh, with, with Google and is it ranked with Google and where is it ranked? Is it ranked? How many pages are ranked uh, or indexed? So a lot of good stuff. Some geeky, nerdy stuff on there as well, <laughs> but uh, it's very easy to use. It's just So all you do is go to that site, you put in your, uh, your web address, push the button, and it grinds for a, 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 you know, 30 seconds, and it's going to give you a whole report of like, uh, hey, these are some things that are doing really good on your site, and here's some things you need to prove, on, prove upon. Maybe, maybe beyond uh, you or even, uh, you know, even your marketing staff, but your IT people can certainly help with, with so, some of those things, or you could take this to, you know, a marketing professional that you hire to help you fix some of those things. So th anyway, those are, those are two of my tap, uh, usable tips and tactics that you can start with today. Great. Yeah, I have a couple of, this is similarly, we could probably do a full webinar on uh, social media and different social media tools that you can use. Um, Buffer is one of the social media scheduling tools that we like to use. Um, and the trick that I love there um, is that you can install an extension right on your browser. So then you can go to whatever page you would like to schedule social media out for. Let's say you've got a blog that you want to start promoting for today and it's evergreen content. So you want people to be seeing it on social media over the next you know, six months or a year or whatever. You can do that right from the page without having to copy that link and bebop all over your tabs. You can just do it right there um, with the Buffer extension. I, I really like that. Buffer, I think, has at least a, a free plan for a certain number of accounts. So um, that could be something that you could install. And then you just right click right on the page and, and you can go ahead and set, up, set that all up there. The other tool I really like um, is, can be for marketing, but really could be for anything else, is Trello. If you haven't heard of Trello, Trello is uh, like Mar Microsoft Word is like uh, the digital form of writing on a piece of paper. Trello is like the digital form of using index cards like you used to do for like your third grade book report or your third grade research reports, <laughs> where you would have your, your card with your notes and you could, you know, you can highlight them or you can rearrange them in all kinds of uh, different ways. Trello. Um, you, have, you can create different cards and you can add people and do conversations on the card. You can color code them in different ways. You can uh, add pictures in your documents so you can have a, a project with everything that you need right there with all of the notes and everything. I really recommend it. We use it for, um, for blog planning. For example, we have an, a list of ideas and then we can just drag that card over to when it's you know, in progress and then when it's published. Um, but it could be used for really whatever project you're working on. I talk about it like some people talk about CrossFit. I really like it. So <laughs> that is my tip for you.
Excellent. So here are a few ideas that we had for the upcoming webinars for possible topics. Um, we definitely want to hear from you, though, about what other topics you would like to um, you would like to hear. So I'll just read these out in case the visual is a little small for people. Uh, we're we would like to talk about landing pages and PPC or pay per click. We'd like to talk about a little more about Google Analytics. Once you get that tracking code, what do you do with it? Um, we'd like to talk about some branding with attractive images that you did not just steal from Google Image Search um, and where to get some other ones. Don't do um, that. Oh, don't, please don't do that. Um, where to find content when your engineers don't write? Um, they will. How do you get them to write and where do you find some other content there? We'd like to talk more about how do you use social media, which uh, social media uh, channels you should be on, which, how do you use each one, how are they different, how are they the same, where do you get that content? Um, LinkedIn, we find, spoiler alert, we find that to be the most effective, so we may do uh, deep dives specifically into LinkedIn. Uh, we want to talk a little bit more about the exchange, the power of the exchange, how can you be using the exchange to your best advantage. Um, like Tony was talking about that UTM, how to, that first tip that he had there about the, about tracking your traffic, we'd like to do a little bit more of info on that possibly. Um, and then we could be talking about marketing automation or email marketing. So um, if anyone else has any other ideas, please put them in the Q&A box so that uh, we, we know about those because this is just kind of what we brainstormed, but we're not in your business and we don't know exactly uh, what you may be thinking. So please share those ideas with us as well. So from there, we would like to see your, your questions or your, your suggestions, your requests. Please go ahead and pop those into the, the question and answer box, and we would love to answer some questions. Okay, I see uh, there's a question here. It says, uh, I saw on your slides you have content marketing, digital marketing, and inbound marketing. What are What's the difference? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, there isn't much of a difference. Yeah, they are they are pretty they are similar. Content marketing would just be um, putting out content that uh, educates your customer, which is typically distributed digitally. But it could be I don't know if you would mail like a case study to someone or something like that. Um, it could also be through magazines and and that sort of thing. So that would be content marketing. Inbound marketing is anything that. Um, a tr is like a magnet that attracts your customers to you when they're looking for something. Um, so again, that's usually uh, putting out content that then is going to be found on a search engine. And uh, digital, was that the third one, digital marketing? Digital marketing, yep. Yeah, digital marketing, you know, it's kind of the umbrella that, that goes over all of it. Yeah, so, again, and I would ask or add that um, just kind of in, Inbound marketing is, you know, it's a thing, but it's actually, a, it's it's kind of a strategy where, you know, it's, the purpose is is to not, um, there, there was a quote by uh, David Meerman Scott, who is a uh, marketing, um, marketing guru. You should, everybody should write this down. Look up a book called The New Rules of Marketing and PR, or PR and Marketing, I can't remember the exact title, but David Meerman Scott. And uh, I'll paraphrase his quote a little bit, but basically he says, hey, you can you can kind of blast out content with, you know, and advertise and, and you know, maybe people will see you uh, uh, and, and have that message. Or you can, you know, cold, basically, you know, cold call and, and, and email out there and, and uh, kind of rule the uh, rule the messaging that way. Or you can kind of own the messaging, meaning your putting out content and people are finding you and you're owning that whole uh, kind of marketing funnel. So when they search for a solution on Google, they find that link, they click on it, and they're met with a landing page, like they have to put in their name and email and company and title, that sort of thing, uh, and then they're delivered that piece of content. From there on, you've got a lead and you uh, have an opted in prospect right now you own their their uh, the the process and which you handle them from there and their thought process around you versus call 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 email 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 and 
they're not ready for you yet. So that's, I guess I would kind of add that of like, this is, that's the benefit of inbound marketing and how that relates to marketing in general. Definitely. Oh, yeah, another question here. Will you discuss utilizing AdWords, how to set up AdWords and developing that service? Yeah, absolutely. That's a whole webinar. That's, in fact, um, there are, there are training courses on lynda.com, uh, and YouTube has, you know, multi-hour, uh, training courses. <laughs> so, so, uh, you, you could, there are several companies in, in, probably in your area that do, you know, two or three day seminars on Google AdWords. So, we, we, we will at least, uh, cover like here's how to uh, set this up. Uh, here, here's some best practices around that. I am definitely not an AdWords uh, expert. Uh, I've made my share of mistakes and had some successes with it, uh, but uh, we'll certainly kind of get in at the the 101, maybe 102 level. If there's someone out there, by the way, um, I forgot to mention this that if there's someone out there that knows about Google AdWords or knows about one of these topics or wants to present something that you didn't see on the list, we're very open to, you know, br bringing in, you know, a guest panelist. And uh, if you want to help us uh, explain something to, you know, the, the, the integrator and uh, the CSIA community. So, yes, great question. We will, we will be covering that. Um, if there's some specific things you want to learn in there, please do email us or let us know or type it in the chat box and we'll make sure we cover those as we're developing that content. Anything to add on that, Megan? Yeah, definitely. I would just say similarly, Google AdWords isn't usually our, our go-to strategy. It's not one of the it's not one of the things that we utilize the most. So uh, I, you know, we have used it a little bit, and I do, I can do the 101 level. But definitely, if there's someone else out there also who uh, considers themselves an expert on it, I would not consider myself I maybe proficient, but not expert. So if there's someone else who would like to get deeper into it, definitely. Yep, yep. I, in fact, I probably know more things not to do on AdWords than I do. <laughs> <laughs> there, there yeah. are some. So here's the, here's the thing about Google AdWords. Just to kind of like give a well, one minute diatribe on that is that the 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 worst thing you could do with AdWords is is have a budget and you spend it and then you don't check it for three months or a month oh, or yeah. every week, right? Because uh, you Google will spend your money. They they have no problem spending their money. That's why their stock is hundreds of dollars per, per <laughs> share, right? But uh, so so do not do AdWords lightly, right? You better, you have a very good plan, have a very good keyword strategy, and, and you really have to go in there daily, if not weekly, or weekly, if not daily, to, to uh, add in what are called negative keywords. Because trust me, if, if somebody, if, if you're selling, um, um, let's say, if you're if you're a supplier and you're selling PLCs or system integration services, you will start to get visitors for home automation integration services or whatever. Well, if you don't do home automation, if you don't put in uh, uh, that kind of equipment, you're going to get a lot of visits, and then people are going to leave your website uh, right away. So yeah. you, that's just a, a very minute example. But the the, per, the the idea here is is that when you're doing AdWords you want to make sure that you are babysitting it um, because otherwise you'll just run out of, buzz, uh, run out of budget uh, very quickly and you, you can increase traffic, but those people won't stay. They'll, they'll, they'll get to the wrong site and they'll say, oh, this wasn't what I want, and they left. Well, that still costs you $2 and a click or something like that. I think that's all the questions we have. Anything else? Yeah. Yeah, let me I'll back up to the previous slide just in case anyone wanted to to look at that list a little bit more and, and think about it. But okay, so while while people are looking at that, they can certainly send us a note. Uh, I think we'll we will wrap up here. And uh, if we miss your question, if you if you submit it just at the end here, uh, we will uh, we'll catch that here um, um, as we. Uh, uh, close up the webinar and uh, we'll respond to you individually. Okay. So thank you, Megan, and thank you everyone for your participation in today's program. Uh, note that this full webinar will be archived on controlsys.org within the next day or so. Many thanks to our host and sponsor, Software Toolbox. Find them on the web at softwaretoolbox.com.
Very shortly, you'll receive a 30-second evaluation about today's program. Your feedback is valuable to, valuable to us, and so we ask that you please complete it. This is Tony Verhoeven at CSIA. Thank you for attending. Thanks, Megan. Goodbye. Thanks, Tony. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.